Yay, hello, welcome everybody. Looks like we've got some people joining. My name is Riley, I'm on the product marketing team at Planoly and we're so happy everyone's here. We're gonna give everyone a few minutes to join. Um, so while we're waiting, feel free to use chat to let us know where you're joining us from. I am currently in Austin, Texas, and we have beautiful weather today, which is good because you never know if it's going to be icing this time of year or 70 and sunny, but today is a 70 and sunny day, which is great. Okay, lately Dallas is pretty too. You no, know, a few weeks ago, it was like icing there as well. So it's like, again, the whiplash of like, is it winter or is it summer? <laughs> Julia, where are you based? I'm in LA. So I saw Lily's comment. I am not salty. I am in LA. I, there is sun. There's been sun. So <laughs> I'm the least salty. I was salty because I was supposed to have to go to new york this week on monday for a shoot and i got out of it and that was when i was like i love la i don't want to leave i don't want to go to the cold i don't do well in cold it's not a cute, <laughs> it's not a cute situation <laughs> for anybody i love it yeah if you're just joining us feel free to let us know what the weather is like or just where you're located um, we're just waiting for a few more people to join and then we'll get started in about one more minute All right, we have a group um, for everyone attending. This is a smaller, more intimate webinar. So please feel free to yeah use the chat. Um, and really we want this to be like as casual and helpful as possible. Um, and yeah, since this is kind of an exclusive webinar, again, we want it to just be more, yeah, more conversational if we can. Um, so yeah, I can go ahead and get us started. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm Riley. I'm on the product marketing team at Planoly. And then we have Laylee here with us, who I think a lot of you guys probably already know as the creative educator and the conference founder. And then we also have Julia, who is a social media expert and entrepreneur. Um, and I am going to start by kind of giving you guys an overview of what Planoly is, if you're not familiar with Planoly, um, we're going to do just like kind of a quick overview of some features and what we do and our mission. And then after that, we will jump into some questions that I have for Laylee and Julia. And then we definitely want to leave time at the end to answer any questions you guys have. So feel free again, use the chat along the way just to like interact with each other and us. Um, and then if you have any specific questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box. Um, but yeah, so for anyone who's not familiar with what Planoly is, Planoly empowers creators to make a living by sharing their passion with the world. Um, and if you'll keep jumping to the next slide, we can talk about kind of how all the ways we help um, creators. So we are very focused on creators and creators can span from a social media manager who works for a brand to an entrepreneur or solopreneur who is just trying to get their business started on social and grow their following. Um, consider Planoly your hyper-organized social savvy sidekick. We have tools to get you inspired, stay organized, create thoughtful content, and be consistent. So I'm going to jump in to each of those areas and kind of talk about some of the features we have. And so a question we get a lot from uh, creators is, you know, what, what do I post? I don't have ideas or I'm stuck. Um, so we tried to create some tools within Planoly that really help you to get inspired. We actually curate every Monday three trending video or audio ideas. So you can find those directly in the Planoly calendar. Our social media team actually curates those every week. We also have social events and you can add your own notes into the calendar. So it's a great resource if you, again, are just stuck or need help kind of getting out of that slump of not knowing what to post. 
Next, we do have a lot of organization tools to save you time. Um, some of those that I wanted to mention, we do have a hashtag manager. So as you're doing that research to find what hashtags are trending or one specific to your niche, this is a great place to store those. And then when you're ready to actually add them to your caption, you can easily just copy and paste them into your caption. We also have a really cool ideas manager. So the ideas manager is a place that you can actually add um, your own ideas. So whether that's a note, a link to a video, um, an image that you might use for inspiration. We also have people create folders of content for like upcoming campaigns or even to store all of their B-roll footage so that it's not on their desktop or in their Google Drive. You can put all of that into the ideas manager and Planoly and then pull from those ideas when you're actually ready to post. Um, so this is another great place where you can kind of store the things and we actually have a mobile app too. So if you're on the go and you think of something later that you wanna post, you can always add it as a note in the mobile app and it'll it'll translate on either our web platform or mobile app for you to use later. So kind of instead of using your notes app or things like that, kind of putting again, everything in one place. Um, another piece that we added recently is some tools around helping you create thought thoughtful content. So we actually just integrated with Canva. So you can actually connect your Canva account to Planoly and upload content directly into Planoly from Canva. We have a lot of new editing tools around um, either like simple things like cropping or trimming videos, really changing the look and feel of them. All of those tools are available to you in Planoly. And one thing I'm most excited about is our new AI caption writer. So I know AI is like a big buzzy thing out there and I would love to answer more questions if they come up, but one of the things that I love about our AI caption writer is that it actually has different personalities that you can choose from. So around the idea of creating thoughtful, like authentic content, um, I know AI can be kind of hit or miss on that or you know, just really not aligned with your brand, but the personas we created are really meant to kind of help assist you in one kind of take that tone of voice you might already be using and really use it as a starting point. So you can always tweak that caption, but it's a great place to get started when you might be stuck on what to include in your caption. Um, and another big one is being consistent. I know that is a goal. We've talked to a lot of creators for 2024. Their goal is to be more consistent, post more consistently. Um, yes, going viral is great, but it's very challenging to figure out what that looks like. So I think the consistency is also a really key piece here of just staying consistent and present across all the channels. So. Um, we do have auto posting to every social channel. And one of the things I love about this is that you can actually create one piece of content and then um, schedule it across all the channels at the same time. You're still, still able to like customize pieces of the content if you want to, like change the caption for YouTube shorts versus TikTok. But you do that all in one place. So it's really easy to repurpose that content. And we see a lot of creators who maybe created something for TikTok, but it actually ends up doing really great as an Instagram reel or vice versa. So I think it's a really great way to kind of repurpose that content and maximize content performance without taking you a bunch of extra time. Um, and one side I wanted to share around the lines of being consistent, I know that can be really challenging. So um, we actually did a study recently that showed that Planoly creators who posted weekly for three months grew their following 6X. Um, so obviously that's not a guarantee, but I think that's really exciting to see. Um, and yes, okay, Caitlin told us this at the com conference. Okay, yes, um, I think this is super powerful. And again, it just goes to show that yes, vir virality can be really exciting too, but that doesn't mean you can't still grow without hitting that viral content. Just being consistent, being present, present your followers you know, are looking for content from you, they're excited. Um, so I think that's a really good piece of this. All right. Well, that was kind of my Planoly pitch. Um, so I will kind of shift over to um, asking Laylee and Julia some questions. Let me pull some up. And again, reminder, feel free to use the chat box or Q&A to ask us questions as well. Okay, my first question for you is, how do you effectively engage with your audience on social media platforms to build a strong community around your educational content? I can go first on this one, um, but it really go goes, it really goes back to thinking about your community first when you're posting. So like what you said with virality, like that's the last thing that I'm thinking about when I'm posting for myself or even for my clients, but I'm posting for myself very educational content. So like 
The last thing on my list is virality. The first thing on my list is community. And when I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking, okay, what can help them? What can they engage with? I'm trying to think about, okay, how can I engage back? And the way I do this is either asking questions throughout my video, being like, let me know if this is helpful and I'll go into more detail on this or asking questions and using the, the caption as more of my opportunity to ask them questions, put it on them and let them be like, you know, please let me know if I can help you further. Let me know if you have questions in the comments. So that is kind of how I spark engagement because engagement doesn't just happen. It just, it has to be sparked. It's almost like a call to action. And if you do have automatic engagement, let me know because that is crazy. <laughs> like that if you're doing, you're doing something right if you do. But I think that like when it comes to that, just being at the root of okay, how how can I put it back on them so that they feel like my comments and my content is a safe space for them to want to engage, you know? Um, and that's really, and, and being there every single time. So talk about consistency. You know, you were saying earlier that most creators want to post consistently and that's their goal. And I think Planoly is really great for that because it can really help. But I think if you're consistent posting, you have to be consistent engaging and it goes hand in hand. So that is really what I would focus on is kind of like give asking those questions, feeding the audience the opportunity to like be able to hook on and be like, okay, I know that, you know, when Julia posts, she's going to respond to me if I have a question. It's kind of like that trust. It, it's that, it's that knowledge of, um, of like a commitment almost with between me and my community. And that is how that grows. Yeah, I agree. I mean, for me personally, I, like I was saying, full transparency, I am really inconsistent with posting, but I'm very consistent with being really engaged and I'm really present on stories. So like that to me, I feel like that's where people know to find me. And so um, although I'm, 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 my goal is to be more consistent and utilize Planoly better and make sure that I'm actually getting things scheduled and out there. Um, because I mean, this sounds like a plug, but it really is so much, it's so easy. I don't know why I'm not doing it, but it's, I think everybody can resonate with that. Um, uh, but in stories, I'm always really, really active. I try to show my face and let people hear my voice. And I stopped worrying about what I look like or what I sound like. And I just show up organically like myself. And then in my situation, it's a little different because I'm hoping that I'm hoping people will connect with me as an educator and then show up in real life and meet me and, and see the same person. So that to me has been really important, which is just showing up fully as myself so that when people meet me in real life, they're like, oh yeah, that's, that's exactly who she was when she was talking to a screen versus talking to me. And I think that's really helped as an educator and as a leader to have people, um, you know, find trust in me and then have that trust be validated when they actually get to meet me. Yeah, I love that. I think that's important. Both of you were talking about, you know, staying engaged with your audience. I think that is one thing and it's still a balance, of course, but like what I, I hear people say, you know, it's hard to plan everything in advance. And so I think plainly sets that foundation where you can like have that evergreen content or kind of your big content buckets, but obviously there's going to be a ton of value. And then hopping on stories, like you were saying, engaging in the comments, trying to find other people just to connect with. So I feel like that balance is really important of having kind of that base layer that plainly can help you have, but then that gives you more free time to hopefully do things like hop on a trend, hop on stories and talk about something in real life. Um, so I feel like that balance is really important. Um, okay, my next question for you guys is around optimizing your content for different channels. I think that can really overwhelm people sometime of like, uh, they, you know, they can only focus on one channel at a time or, you know, just how to get your, your brand across multiple channels. So how do each of you kind of think about channels differently and optimize your content for each channel? I don't know if we want to, <laughs> okay. Um, for me, it, I think about like my two main channels I have in my mind are TikTok and Instagram. And then the ones that I kind of have on the back burner a little bit are YouTube and Pinterest. And those are the ones where I kind of let Planoly take the reins and I plan all my content in Planoly on for YouTube and Pinterest and I let it just schedule out. When it comes to like TikTok and Instagram, I'm a lot more hands-on. And what I think about is, okay, you know, a lot of the stuff that goes into my TikTok planning and into my 
Instagram planning is thinking about my audiences there. I have a smaller audience on Instagram because I didn't focus it on it last year. I started as a content creator last year. So, um, and I'm, I've grown a lot more on TikTok. So I think about what my audience likes on there. And I know because I have a lot more like market research. I, I look at analytics fiercely. Um, but when it comes to like optimizing on each one, I have no shame in posting my TikTok content on my Instagram stories and telling people that like, you know, this video is doing really well. And like, I want to hear their input in the comments. And I link my TikTok on my Instagram stories or like, you know, on Instagram, if I'm posting something, I might post something that I had posted on TikTok, but three days later. And so I'll let people know TikTok saw this first, like, you know, and it kind of gives that like, okay, like I'm filling the cup on each one. I'm just doing it a little differently. And so uh, my goal is to get people from here to here and then go back to there, you know? And it's always like a bouncing game. Um, So that is kind of how I like to optimize it and kind of let people know that like I'm planting seeds on each one. You're going to see something different. I like to call it omni-channel because it's not going to be the exact same content. It'll be different. I post different stories on TikTok. Yes, I post TikTok stories every single day. I also post Instagram stories every single day. And I, I'm posting to my feed and my content on TikTok. So a lot's going on at all times. But I let my audience know that so that they're wanting to kind of like go back, back and forth, you know. And that's I found the most success with that. Yeah, I love that. I I really agree. And I am I am not on a ton of different social media platforms. Like I Instagram is my number one. Um, so it's a little different in that I haven't really ventured too far out. And every time I do, I get kind of overwhelmed and I just like revert back to Instagram. So that's kind of where I live. Um, but and and I know um I know it's it's not a social media platform or a social media channel, but my podcast is really primarily where I get a lot of my messaging out. And so I pull from that to repurpose that into my Instagram accounts. And I do a lot of like features of other people and things like that. So I do think that that helps, but, um, but I love like cross promoting across the different platforms and channels. I think that that's really helpful. And I think a lot of people don't do that because I do think that a lot of people worry that they're being repetitive or redundant, but just the way that I live primarily on Instagram as a creator, I kind of live on TikTok as a scroller. Like I, I scroll TikTok, but I don't really scroll Instagram as much anymore. So if you were, you know, if I was to watch Julia's TikTok, I probably would miss it on Instagram. So I think that there is something to be said about cross promoting. And then also, like you said, Julia, making sure that the things that you can automate and schedule out, like my Pinterest, um, actually I, I ignore it, but Sarah, who does all my, all my schedule, like she has scheduled all my Pinterest stuff for me. Um, it's automated. And so that's really helpful too. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And one thing I'll add to that, I think that I've seen a lot of too, is like the way each platform like treats content is so differently. And like, even the longevity of it just varies so much. I feel like you both brought up Pinterest and I feel like, you know, from a lot of my experience with it, that content it just has a longer lifespan or like maybe it's something you posted last holiday and it like bubbles back up this holiday versus things on maybe Instagram or more like real time in the moment, especially with stories. So I feel like that's another important piece to call out too, is like, it may have a different life cycle. It may have a different like longevity. And I think those are important pieces to consider, especially when you're trying to find what is the best time to post that may not be as important as just getting it to different channels and seeing what kind of audiences you can find. Um, okay, next question is around um, just any advice you have on fostering meaningful collaborations, like any partnerships or collaborations that really benefited your career and how did you go about finding those? Just kind of any advice you can share around that. I can speak to this on two levels. Um, I'm, I've been a social media manager for seven years to mostly celebrity and influencers. So I have been doing brand deals for that seven years, for that duration of the time. And what I've seen on their end is kind of like a willingness to say no a lot, you know, and I don't really like to work with people who are overly eager to say yes, because I think that at the very root of brand deals, there needs to be an organic piece. And if that's not there, then we are going to lose the audience and we are going to lose their trust. So 
I have kind of over the seven years made sure that all of my clients who are celebrities and who are influencers are being smart about their brand deals and only working with people and brands and businesses that they actually use and they actually support. And that feels like a turnkey in their content. Otherwise, there's that like forced factor and audiences now, especially right now, they can smell it from a mile away. So any sort of like forcing it or, you know, saying yes, because of the paycheck, I think it's so hard because so many people want to use social media as a way to monetize and as a way to like, you know, it's their livelihood. And I understand that as a social media manager. But now as someone who's on the opposite end and who's also in content creation, something for me that's really important is the same exact thing. Like you don't want to grab, you want, you don't want to go for the money grabs and you don't want to just like look at your social media as like a cash cow. I think that you can sell out really quickly and like talk about longevity. I mean, there's nothing long-term about that strategy. So like really playing the long game, really taking time. And I talk about this in, in my social media course, like you really have to take the time to think about who you want to work with as a person and who your values align with. And it becomes so much more organic. People can sense the authenticity and that's when you have that real conversion. And your audience, like for example, for me, I've been using Planoly since 2018. So this has been like a very natural partnership for me. I've been using it for my clients. Now I use it for myself. It's like this really interesting, like full circle moment. But like, this was a very organic partnership for me. My, my, my community is not like, what, what is this? Like, why is she telling me about a scheduling app that would make my life easier? Like why, you know? So I think that is like the ultimate goal when it comes to brand deals is obviously thinking about like what really makes sense. And you know, doing outreach to brands and not being scared to kind of like put yourself out there to the ones that you really, really want. Um, and I think that's what ultimately benefits you. And realistically, like I, I'll come back to this a lot, but like realistically at the end of the day, you always really have to have your community in mind. So like, of course, a brand deal benefits you. You, you at the end of the day, get money from a brand deal. However, how can it benefit your community? Like how can you sell it to the point where it benefits your community and benefit and it makes their life easier or better in some way or another? So that is, I think, what you need to think about when it comes to like the core of your brand deals and your partnerships. And then I think from there it just can flourish, you know. Yeah, I I love that um that side of it too, because it's so different than than like what I would share, which is more on the side of like from an educator standpoint, from a speaker standpoint and collaborations and partnerships um, with other educators and with companies, uh, it, even even like Planoly and the Creative Educator Conference, like that partnership and how that came about. And it really does, even though it's like a completely different world, Julia, I feel like it is kind of the same concept of could I stand behind this company? Do I believe in this company? Do I think it's going to serve my attendees well? Um, one example of that for me that I found a lot of success in when I'm partnering with companies, even if it's just like a paid promotional ad is, and and I think, I think actually, and if you guys were at the conference, drop this in the chat, if I'm remembering this wrong, but um, I think Ellen Yin, who was on one of the panels, she mentioned something about the difference between like exclusivity and like ethics. But for me personally, I try to practice exclusivity as much as possible. And it's different because she is a media company, but I am a speaker and I am an educator and a conference host. And so for me, I'm not going to have Planoly there and I'm not going to pitch three other social media marketing platforms because I want to make it, I want to choose the best one that's the best fit for my people and be able to serve my people through connecting them with, I mean, at the conference, it was wild having like the CEO of Planoly there so that they, she could connect with our attendees and they get to see like, who is this human being behind this company and why is this company worth working with? In that same way, I do the same thing with all of my social media collaborations. Um, I've started, I actually started working with an agency that, um, cre that basically, you know, gets these amazing collaborations and partnerships for me and he'll send them over to me, but I still have to do, like Julia said, like I do my due diligence and I make sure like, is this a company that I actually enjoy? Like, is this a company, a product that I would use and that I will use? And am I excited about getting to use it and getting to talk about it? And if not, 
I have to say no. So I do. I love that you said all of that from the perspective of like, celeb, which by the way, celebrity. Okay. Okay, Julia. <laughs> but like, even as like a, like a civilian, I'm like, you know, non-celebrity, but like, I still am like, I still got to put my name on it at the end of the day. And so sometimes it is important to say no. That was a bit of a ramble, but I hope it was helpful. I love it. Um, as a civilian, I feel the same <laughs> as a mere civilian. Um, no, I think that's really important. And even coming from the Planetly brand side, I mean, the people we want to partner with, we want it to be authentic and we want it to be something natural that resonates with their audience. And that is a tool they use and know to know how to talk about. I think we've also seen in the past too, when maybe they haven't used Planetly and they're trying to promote Planetly and it just, it's not clicking. And so I think it's really important to, yeah, on the brand side as well, find those people that really are advocates for you because it comes across so much more genuine. Um, okay, shifting gears a little bit. Um, the next question is, um, in the ever evolving landscape of social media, how do you stay adaptable and ensure that your content remains relevant to current trends and interests? Yeah, for me, this is interesting because my whole content, it, it it's all about educating about social media and landscapes. So I'm constantly having to have my finger on the pulse, which I do for my job anyways, and make sure that I'm the first one to report a trend or the first one to report an update. You know, like Instagram the other day announced that they're officially coming out with something called Flipside. And I immediately jumped on it because I'm like, I need to be the first one to say these things. Like my whole thing is like, I want to be the authority in my space. And that's kind of like how I operate of like, how can I best like educate my audience without it feeling like I'm spamming them or like, I don't know what I'm talking about because like the whole reason I actually started social media, like, like talking about social media on my own social media is because I saw so many people being like, I'm a social media manager and giving horrid advice. I was like, oh my God, I hope no one takes that advice. It's awful advice. It's very clear like that person does not have experience. So for me, it's a constant thing of like, I need to keep up with the trend so that I can kind of like almost like digest it and do it in a very simplified way to my audience. Um, but I think if anybody's watching this and they're not – you know, a social media manager talking about advice and they're just educating or at the very least like content creating. I think that it's important to go back to like, it doesn't always have to be on trend, you know, like it should at the end of the day, like the content that you're creating, it should feel like you, you don't need to force anything. Um, audience members will, will know when it's forced or when, when they'll know if it's a stretch for you. Uh, that's not me saying that you have to fit yourself into a niche, but like, I think it's important for everybody to know that they don't have to jump on every single trend and they don't have to like put themselves into the, into a, you know, a new category just because it's like blowing up. If you don't want to do get ready with me, like Alex Earl is doing, that's blowing her up. That's okay too. It's not just, it doesn't mean that your content's going to be irrelevant or your content's not going to be timeless. So I think like knowing at the end of the day, like what content works for you and what's kind of like not necessarily like you're in your lane I think that's a really important piece um and I think that's what people will eventually kind of like not necessarily to pigeonhole yourself but to also kind of like understand your overall content buckets and what goes into that so that you're not just like scrambling at the chance of each trend if that makes sense yeah, um, I want to know what flip side is. But yeah, people, I see some people saying, what is flip side? <laughs> what is it? Um, it's basically like Finsta. So like Instagram has come up with this new concept that literally nobody has asked for. And it is called flip side. And it's basically like a close friends list, but for your Instagram feed. So it's taking like the the reason of having a second account for any reason whatsoever if like you're sharing content or if you're using that as like a mock feed or whatever you're doing on a finsta they've basically eliminated that and also they're creating it because and this is the thing that i think is fun is like i think people are going to see flipside as finsta and the way i see flipside is more of like added value so like if you're obsessed with me and my content and you want to know all the things that I'm doing, all the behind the scenes, all the things that aren't going to make it to like my normal, more curated feed, I will be posting that on my flip side. So like it's more added value, more raw, real, 
behind the scenes captures. And it's, it's great for you if like, you know, you mentioned you had a podcast. So like, if there are clips, certain clips that like, you want to give people the first look at, or you want to show people that didn't make it to the podcast, or you're editing out or whatever it is, like, telling people like, oh, I'm posting this on my flip side. It's more of like my relaxed, uncurated feed. It's close friends. It's, and you know, obviously close friends, meaning like you can specifically add whoever you want. Um, But yeah, I think it's very interesting. I mean, some people already have it. Some people probably need to update their apps to have it, but I know that it's slowly being dripped out there. That actually is really, that's interesting. I don't know how I feel about it yet, but I like, I like the concept. I like, yeah. I don't think Instagram intended it for it to be like what I just said of like an added value piece. Um, I think they probably want your broadcast channel to be that, but you know, I think it's kind of cool to have like more of like a secret like community, you know, it's almost like a private Facebook group, but for your Instagram, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of potential. Yeah. I think so too. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing that because I had not heard of it. Yeah. Clearly, I don't have it yet. Well, that's good. I mean, that's that's what I'm here for. <laughs> um, but no, I in terms of like the actual the trends and things, I just honestly, you took the words out of my mouth when you started talking about um, not not necessarily keeping up with trends, more like not doing the trends because that's what I do. And I I did. There was like a hot minute probably around COVID time when I was like, okay, yeah, me too. I'm going to lip sync something. And I just like hated it. And I just like, don't, it's just not real. It's not real for me. And I, um, I actually, I love dancing and I am a trained dancer and dance teacher, but I will not be dancing on the internet. I, I have too many dance students who follow me on the internet. So I'll never do that. And so like, I do feel like those trends, they're fun for me to watch, but I just, it's not my priority as an educator, as a speaker, as a, um, you know, as a coach, those are not things that like fit into my brand. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with following trends and staying on top of them. In fact, I like to stay on top of them so that I know what's going on in the world, but I don't ever feel the pressure anymore to partake in them. So I, I like that. I like that even a social media expert and, and someone whose job it is to, to do this is also giving the permission that like, don't have to do that to stay relevant you can still be relevant and still be an amazing educator without having to do the trends yeah I think that makes complete sense and kind of building off of that my next question is around balancing the different types of content like especially if you're trying to have really educational content but you also need that like flavor of entertainment to keep your audience and keep them wanting more how do you kind of balance especially maybe not being on trends um, entertaining and educational content? I think for me personally, as an educator, this comes from like the style of video that I post. So like, I'm not a very like monotonous person. I'm like very, I can get sassy. I can, I can yell at you. I can say whatever I want to say in my videos. And I think that that's kind of like where I break, like if I'm talking about TikTok stories, at the end, I might be like, so if you're not posting TikTok stories, why not? Like I might, you know, make it a little bit more sassy or I might make it kind of choppy in my editing style. So for me, I'm not necessarily following all the trends and sometimes I do. I mean, sometimes I'll jump on something. Um, but for for me personally, it really does come down to like how I edit. And I think it's important for me to like establish my style. Um, I like to like entertain in the sense of like, I pop things up. I pop certain text and keywords up while I'm speaking and while I'm saying it. So, and that's also a bonus point because it's SEO focused too. So I definitely am very intentional with what I'm popping up and when I'm popping it up. And you really have to understand at the baseline, your audience has like about a three to 15 second retention. And so like, how are you going to sit there and make them sit through a one minute video. You know, how how can you, whether it's your editing style, whether it's the way that you're speaking, whether it's, you know, what you're popping up as you speak, um, whether it's the music in the background, how can you make your consumer journey while they're, you know, watching your whole video the most enjoyable as possible? Like if you're keeping the likes, the ums, the dead space in your videos, people are going to scroll. It's a quick way to get rid of people. If you're 
talking very like monotonously and you're not kind of like giving any sort getting to the point you know I, I like I think that there's specific ways in that way where it's like you know someone says something at the beginning of the video making it seem like they're going to give you that answer and then you get to the end of the video and they've given you nothing and you're like okay I'm never watching this person's video again you know or it's like the more of like the introducing themselves like I I say no to the introduction so like I do not introduce myself ever in my TikTok videos and if you are stop <laughs> I'm like stop introducing yourself and people if people want to know you I promise you they will figure you out so no introducing yourselves almost like making your video as quick short not short in sense of like but like with as much as you can so that people do want to stay you have to give them that reason so um you know it doesn't need to be trendy but it definitely needs to be packed with value and you do have to kind of understand like the basics and I talk about that a lot too in my content yeah I mean I echo all of that I feel like there's just a difference between being trendy and being um like educated on how to reach your target audience and how to actually communicate well. Um, and, and even again, as a, as a speaker and a coach for speakers, I talk about it a lot where I'm like, you know, I am older. I'm a, I'm an elder millennial, take out the millennial pause. Like you have to keep up with like where the things are going in our online society and the attention spans are not there. And I don't have time to wait for somebody to turn on their camera and stare at it for three seconds. That's like, a much longer three seconds than you feel like it is. And um, and so I do think that there's just a really big difference, like you said, between it's not a trend, but it is having knowledge of how to actually gain people um, into, be, into being interested in you. And that's not talking about yourself because nobody cares about you. They care about what they can gain just like, just like we talk about at the conference, like it's not about you, the speaker, it's about the people in the audience. So the same thing on social media it's not about you, the creator, it's about the people that you are trying to talk to. And so I, I do think that that was such a good point. And there can be some harsh truths when you have to look at your millennial self and say like, where am I not keeping up? But if I can do it in my 30 something old years, then you guys can do it too. I feel you on that one. I think too, I obviously am not a professional creator by any means, but I think too, just one other piece I would add is like, I do is as someone in that social space, think about what I enjoy watching. Like, I, what am I stopping to look at? Why am I stopping to look at it? And I feel like that can be applicable to any any vertical as well of just like, what are people doing that's, that is taking off and and not copying them by any means, but understanding what are, that, what are the styles or techniques they're using to really get people hooked. Um, I think it's important. Okay, I have one last formal question. And then I saw there's a couple questions in Q&A, but please again, plug to add more questions if you have them. Um, my last question for you guys is, can you share a specific challenge you faced in your creator journey and how you overcame it? What lessons did you learn from that experience? This one's a little tough because, I mean, there's so many like hurdles as a creator, but something very recently that happened was someone stole my content and copied my content verbatim and I caught them. And it was like a wild experience because I had just randomly scrolled on my Instagram discovery feed, which is so unlike me. I don't do that. I don't scroll. So I had just been on randomly on a Sunday scrolling and I saw this girl and it was verbatim my words. And I had to play my video and her video next to each other. And it, it took me back because as a creator, you spend so much time really thinking about like, I mean, we've spent 40 minutes at this point now talking about how much goes into content and creation and there's just so many elements and like as someone who's in social media management I just know that like the integrity that's in what I put out is so important to me so like the time and energy and the effort that it takes is just a lot so that was a big struggle for me as a creator is having to confront this person and basically call them out um it was hard because I'm not necessarily like a confrontational person in that way. I don't want to like expose in that way, but like it is a harsh truth that like when you are, you know, posting on Instagram, someone might take inspiration from you, which is totally fine. You know, credit is really important to give creators, 
um, like acknowledgement of another creator's work is really important if you are kind of like taking inspiration from them. But I think in the social media landscape, like the overall challenge needs to be like, if you are inspired, you have to understand how to put your own spin on it, put your own words and really have like an authentic voice in your own way. Um, so for me, it was like gut wrenching to see someone steal my content. And that was a big challenge that I had just got like literally last week had to go through. And it was just like very eye opening. Um, but I also think it really does at the, at the end of the day have a really important message. And that is to really find your voice and to not steal. It's not okay to steal content from other people. It's not okay to like copy other people just because it might sound right or you know you want to share it with your audience I think we have to acknowledge that there is so much that goes into this and everybody if you are going to be creating content you have the responsibility of creating content and doing it in like the most you know respectable and the most authentic way possible so that was a challenge that I recently went through and it was rough <laughs> it was really rough Oh my gosh. I've been there and it is the worst. Yeah. Um, I've been there from social media content where actually it was so bad that they copied my hashtags and that's how I found them was like one of the hashtags had like one of my programs was hashtagged. Oh I didn't know it was like the name of my, you know what I mean? Cause it was kind of a like generic program name. Right. And I don't think they realized it was mine. And then they were like, my social media manager did it. I didn't do it. And I was like, I don't, I don't care who did it. Um, and I'm actually currently going through that right now in a different way, literally like today, but it's the worst. It's, um, it's awful. I'm sorry. You have to deal with that. Yeah. I mean, as a creator, it's like, it's just disheartening. And it's like the whole point of creating content is creating the content. So <laughs> you have to kind of like take that on as, as your own responsibility to create that authentic content. So I think that's a struggle for a lot of us, you know? And I also think, sorry to, to segue, but like, because I'm so passionate about this right now, I'm like, I'm someone who like, because I know I'm a social media manager, because I know that I want to be the first to talk about trends and be the first to talk about things in the way that I want to talk about. I actually don't look at anybody else's content who's in my lane, who's in a social media role. I don't want their ideas or the way they say something or what they're saying to affect me at all in the way that I say it or my voice. Like, I don't want to sit there thinking, is this content coming from me or did I get it from someone else. Like, you know, we're scrolling so much nowadays that I think like as a content consumer, it can be really hard to kind of like take that hat off and become a content creator. So I think that's another thing that you need to think about. If like, if your urge is to copy, maybe you need to stop scrolling, you know, and really like sit in your own creative energy. Yeah. I love that. I feel like that's why I scroll TikTok and I don't scroll Instagram is because on TikTok, I'm just like looking at completely different content that has nothing to do with my business. Um, so I love that tip for me. I think probably the biggest challenge I've had as like a creative educator on social is just, I just talk about this a lot, but just the, uh, imposter syndrome of showing up as a leader, as an educator, as a thought leader. Um, you know, for those who are watching, who attended the conference, um, Denight talked a lot about thought leadership and, you know, we all kind of in conversation talked about imposter syndrome and how difficult it can be to overcome, but how the more you put it into practice, the easier that it is. And so just continuing to show it, show up and give that education and, you know, turn, you know, turn a blind eye to like Julia said to everybody else, turn that blind eye and like really just put yourself as this is my mind, this is my expertise, and this is what I can offer you. I think the more you do that, the the more it's helped me at least in the past decade of of overcoming that imposter syndrome, not to say that it's ever completely gone because it's human, woman. So, yeah. <laughs> so fair. Um, well, thank you guys so much for all of this content. It's been so great. Um, let me pivot really quickly. To the questions, I saw one in the chat and one in Q&A, so let me answer the Q&A one first because it's more plainly specific. Um, this person, Sarah, said, it seems like Instagram and TikTok um, get a lot of attention when it comes to social media, but I'm personally not interested in spending time on those platforms. Pinterest has been our focus over the past few years with great results. How can Planoly support Pinterest content planning? 
Um, so yeah, just really quickly to kind of give another Planoly plug, we actually do have two ways you can plan Pinterest content with us. We have a pin planner, which is a space just dedicated to all of your Pinterest content. You can create campaigns where you have tons of content that you schedule across multiple boards all at the same time, or you can just schedule individual pins and assign them to different boards. We also have our new, what we're calling our multi-channel workspace, which is where you can actually plan across all of those channels and Pinterest is there as well. Um, I gravitate towards that one because that's um, you know kind of where the direction we're headed in terms of creating new features there. That's where our AI caption writer is. That's where our hashtag manager is. So I think either space could work, but I do think jumping into multi-channel, then you can easily repurpose it for other channels if you want to, um, or if not, you can again still auto post it to Pinterest on the boards that you want to. So either way, you can you can plan for Pinterest with Planoly. Um, okay, next question from Heather in the chat I saw uh, was how to balance the ratio and type of content you share, struggle with balancing sharing educational tutorial content versus my portfolio and client work and personal tidbits in my co content. Um, just curious what y'all's thoughts are on that. Yeah, I like to use an editorial calendar um, just to kind of like overview my Monday through Sunday and make sure that I'm hitting all of those content buckets. But I also just posted something the other day where I talk about the two for me and two for you method. I give this to my clients who have kind of like a lot to post and they know what's going to do well. So let's say that she knows, let's say Heather knows that her tutorial content and, you know, her portfolio or content's going to do really well, but she really wants to start peppering in more of like her personal content into there. So, and that's what like brings her like the most joy and the most creative excitement I always say like do the two for me, two for you method where it's two posts, you know, either a day or a week on that and two posts for you that light you up so that it's spread out and it can be, you know, that's why I like to go back to my editorial calendar so that make sure that, you know, Monday I know that I'm posting a personal tidbit, Tuesday I know that I'm going to be posting, you know, tutorials or testimonials or whatever it is. Like I like to make sure that all of my content that I want to fit into the week is being accounted for. And then I'm not just playing a guessing game and I'm not like stressing myself out on that. So I have different tools that I use for that. And then from there, when I do use an editorial calendar for myself, I can go into Planoly and plan it, or I can kind of like manually do it myself. I have two different ways of doing that either with me or my clients, but I think like really t taking the time to schedule it out in your own way that works for you is going to make all the difference so that you are fitting in all the things that you want to do. Yeah, I love that. So tactical. Um, I feel like for me, Heather, I, I kind of look at when I'm trying to plan it. Uh, it is hard, especially when you are doing both education and your service. Sorry, it's my doorbell and your services and your, um, you know, your personal life too, because you want people to connect with you. And I understand that. I think that there, for me, at least I don't put a cap anymore on my personal things that I share because I found that, that no matter what I'm doing or selling or sharing, like I'm, you're not oversharing your personal tidbits. Like don't, don't keep those too close to the chest. And I wouldn't say worry about that too much, but the, the way I decide on that, like Julia was talking about her editorial calendar, I'm not as fancy, but like when I look at like what I want to share and when I think about like, what am I trying to attract at the, during that time? So like in Q1, I know that like, I really wanted to attract people to see, I'm just making something, this is not actually my thought process, but in Q1, I would look at it and I'd say like, okay, well, I really want to bring in um, more client. I want my portfolio to attract more clients. So I'm going to post 60% portfolio work and 30% you know, education or, you know, 20% educational and 20% personal. And so that's kind of how I, I calculate like how much of each thing I should share is based off of what I'm trying to attract to book or to bring in cons customers or clients or consumers or whatever. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Yeah, I love that. And I love the idea of balancing, like whether it's your quarterly goals or like what's happening seasonally or, you know, in the world at the time, I think there's always that layer to add to it. And so it won't always be the same, which I think is good because then it's also not so predictable. There's that kind of blend that can just draw different people in for sure. 
Um, all right. Well, I think that's all the questions. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me today. I do want to mention, and I know we put it in the chat a few times, but if you're interested in trying Planoly, um, you can go to Planoly.com. Um, we have a mobile app as well. Um, I will say if you want to use the coupon code and get the free trial, sign up on web and then download the app later. Um, but yeah, so you can go to Planoly.com, start your free trial. That's just an automatic thing you'll get. And then you can use code creator 30 to get 30% off any annual plan. And that will give you access to all the things I talked about, AI, the multi-channel workspace, auto posting to all the channels. Um, and it's a great way to kind of get started and you know put yourself out there. So um, yeah, please give it a try. Um, thank you guys again so much. Thank you. This is so good. Thank you. Yeah, bye y'all. <laughs>